Let's get into Ethereum. Let's talk about it. We have a successful upgrade to Bellatrix and the merge is just that much closer. Now, Ethereum merge for the uninitiated means that you will no longer be able to mine Ethereum with ASICs or GPUs or anything. And this is a big deal because Ethereum's security uh, pricing for miners is very high. They pay the most for security out of everybody except for Bitcoin. And that means that, of course, a ton of revenue is going to get stripped out of the mining uh, seen essentially. Ethereum's much awaited Bellatrix upgrade is complete on Tuesday and the system will move from proof of work to proof of stake. The network wide Bellatrix transition will set the map for the rest of the upgrades. The merge is expected to go live between September 10th to the 20th. Now, I saw a, a tweet as well from Mr. Vitalik Buterin that said it was the 13th through the 15th, pretty narrowed down there. Ethereum will switch over to the new method of validating transactions, ushering in a new era in the crypto sphere. The Ethereum merge is divided into a two-step process. The first is the Bellatrix upgrade, which was successfully deployed at the counter towards a TTD threshold, total terminal difficulty of this number, very large number in the article, in a measure of activity on the network. The next upgrade, Paris, will be initiated and the technical effects of the switch from proof of stake to proof of work, or I think they mean to reverse that from proof of work to proof of stake will open. After the Paris is triggered, the merge is only a few days away from being complete. However, the Ethereum Foundation has not given an exact date of the merge. Their latest blog suggests that the transition might be complete anywhere between September 15th to the 20th. Moreover, the merge is the biggest event for the crypto industry this year and is the most anticipated transition. In the new proof of stake method, Ethereum will use much less energy consumption, which is 99.95% less as per the foundation's estimates. Reports also state that the gas fees will see a reduction post the Ethereum merge and investors can initiate transactions at a nominal fee. That's not proven yet at all, so I wouldn't believe this one yet. However, we will have to wait and watch the uh, after the upgrade goes into fully live and to confirm the gas fees on the network. The uh, crypto industry has received its share of brick baits for higher energy consumption uh, or brick bats. Interesting. Share of brick bats. Never heard that term for high energy consumption, calling it a threat to the environment. Nonetheless, things are changing for the good with energy efficient merge, making it easy to initiate transactions. Of course, we, they say that, but, you know, at the same time, we go back to it's centralized. It's within Amazon data centers. It is also screwed up that if you're big tech, nobody cares that you are completely destroying the environment with your massive data centers, right? But if you're, you know, Joe Schmo trying to run a small colo or trying to run a small mining farm, well, you're the bad guy. But Amazon, no, they're not the bad guy with the massive data centers that suck up a ton of energy and aren't even fully utilized all the time. It's ridiculous. The Ethereum merge is seen as both a technological environmental advancement that brings confidence into the industry. And that has been, I mean, people have said that, but from the prices on Ethereum, that's not necessarily been the case, right? Luckily today, you know, Ethereum is up. The Bellatrix update, update an upgrade definitely did push the uh, price of Ethereum up. I was expecting Ethereum to be pushed up a lot more from the merge. It's not really seeming to actually play out that people are, are bullish on Ethereum. Uh, as much as I would have expected. But the question is for miners, right? Because obviously this is happening. Get over it, right? Like that's kind of the whole thing. Like I got people that are like, well, maybe it'll get delayed again. And I'm like, look, just accept that it's happening. Get ready to move on. It's kind of where we're at. And uh, in an interesting term of turn of events, we actually have Charles Hoskinson kind of chiming in on two different projects surrounding proof of work. Now, Moving after proof of work, what do we got going on, right? We got Ethereum Classic primarily because Ethereum Classic is going to soak up a majority 
of the ASIC hash rate. And then from there, we got things like Ergo, we got Flux, which we talked about before, and so on. Charles Hoskinson's kind of tu like tuning in on this a little bit, and he did talk about Ethereum Classic, but it wasn't in a good light. But I think you should be aware of this. Now, of course, Maximalist.etc had said no drama, just saying that SHA-3 and also a treasury was rejected, and then Charles Hoskinson wanted to implement a 20% minor tax to milk ETC. But Charles Hoskinson did, quote, retweet this and respond, I love how a sustainable development fund turns it into a minor tax. Ethereum Classic still gives me sadness for what could have been. It's a dead project with no purpose or real compelling argument to exist outside of spite. And that is the general sentiment surrounding Ethereum Classic that I've seen time and time again. And is that true? Um, like, that's kind of a hard one to see. Because, like, at the end of the day, there is development going on on Ethereum Classic. We have seen an injection of, you know, funds from Antminer, essentially. But it does feel like it is just, it's basically Bitmain trying to keep the project alive so that their product is viable, right? That's pretty much the only reason why that kind of 10 million injection 10 million dollar injection of funds was sent there if we look at most of what else is on ethereum classic we do have to be frank that it is a lot of copy pasta of what already is on ethereum and kind of like the poor man's version right yes there are positives going on here what is positive ethereum classic is on a majority of exchanges right? You're going to have adoption across all of them. That's great. What else is? It's got integration already with MetaMask, right? Great news there. It does have some, it doesn't have D, as much DeFi, if any DeFi right now, but it does have NFTs. So there is NFT space to take a look at there. It needs some push as far as development for DeFi, um, at the very least some more push for it. So there is that, um, some of the downsides though with Ethereum Classic, it's been attacked so many times that your confirmation times being a miner are very, very high. So your confirmations, you know, on crypto.com gonna take you three to five days. On something like Coinbase, gonna take you 24 to 48 hours. It's not like Ethereum that you deposit it daily, get it cashed out, and then that helps you with taxes. You're gonna have to cash it out, you know, three, five. Three, you know, basically two to seven days later because of the how much uh, it's been attacked in the past. So that's kind of the downside. So if we're actually like looking for Charles Hoskinson's opinion, if you guys even care, because you know it is Cardano, which is essentially not a proof of work coin. But what are his opinions? What is he looking at? Well, it looks like if you're into proof of work, he says. I'd recommend checking out the Ergo Foundation. Ergo is one of the few coins in the proof of work space still innovating and has a great community. So if you guys are looking at getting into proof of work, you know, that's what Charles Hoskinson thinks you should get into. Obviously, he's biased. Why is he biased? Because this is important, right? Um, when you see large figures like this being biased towards a project, well, you need to take into consideration a few things. Charles did work on Ethereum. He was around for the Ethereum Classic split. That's pretty important. On Cardano, who did he work with? Well, he worked with Kushti. Who is Kushti? Kushti's the primary developer of Ergo. So he has a good working relationship with Kushti from Ergo does not have a good working relationship with anybody from Ethereum Classic. So that is where that bias comes in. And you should be aware of where that is. Um, do I agree with him? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, I don't like Ethereum Classic straight from the perspective of I'm a GPU miner, not an ASIC miner. I don't need to throw my ASICs on anything. And I would rather keep the ASICs off of my network. And so if I'm kind uh, off of the network that I'm going to be mining. So if I look at that, I would want Ergo to succeed over, of course, ETC. I want both to succeed at the end of the day, to be completely like frank and open about it. But that being said, if I had to choose one, I would prefer Ergo because I would prefer the uh, ASICs basically getting kicked off the network, in my humble opinion.
Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.